Hey, well, this, this is great. It's like, we ain't practicing anymore. But, but they, yeah, they have to get to the point now, mentally in their head, with the person I'm sitting in front of, he is not my friend right now. Mm -hmm. He is someone who I have to destroy in this game of Hearthstone, in this very important match of Hearthstone. Staz going to lead off with the Q block and switch with the class that Staz has not brought, which is Paladin. Who, who, who do you think this series is more important to as far as these, these players go? Staz obviously already has had a big win mm -hmm. in, in terms of WSG a while back. Um, switch, a little bit newer, I think, to, to the scene, at least uh, internationally. Sure, yeah. He's been playing a lot in local tournaments, but he's not all in on Hearthstone, I would say, as much as Staz is. Right. And um, this is his first internationally streamed tournament. Wow. I confirmed that a while ago, and uh, he is not one of the qualifiers for playoffs as of last season, whereas Staz is. So in terms of trying to break into the HCT um, championship tour in general, then it should mean more to switch. But again, Staz, of course, looking to just consolidate his position as one of the premier players in Southeast Asia. Well, we're jumping right in. It's switch on one of the more aggressive decks in the tournament, the Murloc Paladin, which we did just see, obviously, in the last series. Very successful against Sugoi. And I believe it won this matchup. Is that right? It beat the it beat the warlock. Yeah, with a similarly slow start, mm. and uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna have all that good a time against us, though, because we do see the skull of Monari is in hand already, as well as a doom guard defile. Of course, one of the most punishing cards against any deck that looks to go wide on the board. No void lords just yet, though, and th yes. that that is a big factor when you're considering cube warlock versus the aggressive decks. Yes, doom guard can push a lot of damage to the face, but it actually isn't that great at protecting the warlock's own face against this onslaught of murloc damage, which will be coming eventually, albeit not yet. Yeah, I was just gonna say, what murlocs? Right, there's right, right, there's right. this dude, um, he's a three mana two three. <laughs> not all that impressive. There uh, is a cool two arms in hand. Yeah. So very, very soon, we're gonna see the murloc tide callers. Ho well, Switch is hoping to see murloc tide callers. Sure. And Staz, knowing that he's about to coin out the skull, just passes that turn. And now Switch, actually going for the Megasaur wow. as opposed to Call to Arms here. <sighs> Do you think these are the options he wanted? I guess Wind Fury is okay, but I mean, even attack doesn't look that hard to me here. Just three damage on the board. Yeah, it might have been a consideration to go for Divine Shield against other decks, Divine Shield or Death Rattle against other decks that have AoE that deal damage in one go. But since you're playing against the Defile yeah. deck, usually that kind of stickiness is not that relevant. Yeah, that Death Rattle is so bad against Defile. So Mountain Giant costs three mana this turn usually seems like a pretty good bet. Is that a little bit too passive? He doesn't really have many other options. Yeah, I'm looking at the coin skull just because he has two turns of demons <laughs> uh, coming up. He will be taking at least eight to face this turn though, but I think he's at a safe enough health total that Staz can go for this. And now switch. Um, he did oh, forego the call to arms, I think, because that board would have been weaker to Hellfire than this board. But because of the order in which he played call to arms and the Megasaur, it's really hard to capitalize on that. And rolling two taunts on your sacred malls, I mean, on your unidentified malls, it's not is, ideal, is it? Yeah, quite unlucky. <laughs> However, with the Doom Guards about to slam down on the board one at a time. <laughs> They might actually end up being at least somewhat helpful, though I should imagine Staz would have been thinking of trading regardless. Yeah, the Doom Guard going into the Megasaur would full clear everything with the Defile because Doom Guard goes to two health, then you have one, two, three, yep. and the Death Rattle dies as well. Yeah. So on top of that, are we tapping? I am unsure, but so uh, <sighs> I think it's fine just because you know you're having another Doom Guard come down the next turn, so you'll definitely have some semblance of board presence. Yeah, well, if it wasn't for the fact that we're about to be going into turn six for the Paladin, I would say, yeah, Staz, just drop a Mountain Giant, put an 8-8 down, trade away the 5-4, start to make your own board. However, the fact that Sunkey Patarum would potentially turn yes. this 8-8 into a 3-3 and allow Switch all of the great trades, it makes it a little bit more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. I'm still looking at the Defile. 
The play that you described earlier yeah. looked a lot safer. Staz doesn't want to play it safe, though. Staz wants to win this game. I can see that, and he's rewarded because there's no Tarim in hand, nor is there even a Murloc buffing card. So now Switch is suddenly not the aggressor anymore. Right. And that is the flip side of the Q block that gets the Doom Guards and doesn't get the Void Lords. Yes, he cannot defend himself with a taunt, but many say that offense is the best defense. Sure. And uh, Stas is proving that right now. Just imagine if this had at least, like, if even one of the malls had plus one attack written on it instead. This could be a whole different story. Ooh, just one mana short of Lackey Defile, which would have been insane. So how does Stas get past these actually rather annoying taunts at the end? We were saying that the taunt wasn't very helpful, but yeah. look at this. It's one preventing this 8 attack minion from going face. Yeah, I think you would have to make two trades to actually clear everything because of the way the defile numbers add yeah. up. There's no way you get something to 2 health. Uh, so yeah, this is just going to be the play. He can uh, play the Umbra on top of it, which makes the Lackey really scary next turn though. So I don't think Staz is too sad about this at all. Yeah, so Switch can deal with the Umber with a Vine Cleaver, but the question is, can he afford to? The other option is silence it and play Righteous Protector. The issue is, if Umbra survives, that's a guaranteed Void Lord and three Void Walkers immediately <laughs> for Staz next turn when he plays the Possessed Lackey. Exactly. And uh, as we can see, Switch is not going to let that happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Void Lord will come out next turn either way thanks to the Skull of Minari. So, a very awkward position for Staz to be in because he's essentially at 6 health staring down this Vine Cleaver, which means Tarim is very scary if even just 2 minions stick. So he might be inclined to take some very, very awkward trades. It'd be really nice to set up lethal here. Um, if you take one trade and leave up a 1-1, one, one, then it would have to be a two-card combo, I believe, to find lethal there. Okay. Uh, like Blessing of Kings plus something. Um, yeah. Alternatively, if you take both trades and just put down the Mountain Giant, this is still not a lethal setup because it's only 21 damage. But Staz is taking no chances here. Yeah, all Doom Guards are gone as well, so there's no way to yeah. extend it that way. I can understand this because he knows that he's going to get a Void Lord next turn guaranteed. Yes. Juggler oh. coming last there is quite unfortunate, but Switch has like four... Min okay, limited by the board space that he has. Yeah. Four rolls on Juggler. He can actually... If he was willing to face tank eight damage, he could actually easily clear up the Mountain mm. Giant and, well, you'd think the Doom Guard as well, yeah. unless he got extremely unlucky. And, and then just hide his face behind one Righteous Protector, and in theory, the other Mountain Giant shouldn't be able to connect with it. Yeah, and um, Twisting Nether would have to be played for stats here, uh -oh. barring a Hellfire top deck, because Spellbreaker would be able to push through the Void Lord. Spellbreaker is such a hard card to play around with Void Lords. Yeah. Oftentimes you don't have the luxury of playing around it at all and just have to say it's not there. Right. Um, is it, this one of those situations? Does Twisting Nether, it, does playing Twisting Nether on your own Void Lord feel just too horrible? To actually, do? it's fine, right? Because then you get three taunts in, instead of too, one. Yeah. 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 And uh, Switch only does is just play one Spellbreaker. They are three much weaker taunts, but in two turns, Blood Reaver Gul'dan can come yes. down and bring everything, including the Doom Guards, back to life. Yep, Twisting Nether is the way Staz goes. He is not going to let Switch burst him down too easily. Okay, but Switch does have an opportunity for a lot of juggles. Um, I think you should, yeah, be knifing down one of these Void Walkers first so it's less other targets. Lost in the jungles, another two juggles. It, I don't think it ever gets there, but it's creating a board that might get there the next turn. Second of mine favor coming down this turn is... Yeah. Yeah, why not? It all fits. H1's drawn three cards, that's reasonable. Stats oh. did play around it nicely though. Oh wow, okay. Defile, Hellfire, anything. 
Okay. Um. Oh, well, he's going to have to just model coil or um, oh, Co and tap, I guess. He's got two more tries to get Co them. Coil is always happening here. Right? Ah. Okay, so he has the second Void Lord. So this thins your deck um, before that. You can still draw Defile. Not quite. Not it. Now, um, hang on a second. Spellbreaker and Sunkeeper Tarim can that is super both be lethal. played this turn. Yeah. <laughs> I think super lethal is a great way of describing this year <laughs> as Switch is just about to take the first win in the grand finals of HTT Taipei with, again, this Merlot Paladin, which has just been performing great all through the event. Mm -hmm. Not that many players brought it, but those that did, uh, they're, they're glad they did. Yeah, and crucially, it got a win past the Warlock, which I would say is a kind of a Warlock favorite matchup, at least compared to these other decks that Switch brought. You know, it's got the Aggro Mage. It was banned, of course, and Face Hunter. And yeah, million ways of... <laughs> okay, wait, wait, one sec. Um, so Breaker on the, on the Void Lord, Lord always happens. Trade anything into the 1-1 one, one Void Walker and then Tarim. Is only 15, right? Uh, okay. But but the, the, the juggles There is a knife juggler on the board and he would, again, he Yeah, this is the right order for sure to maximize. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. Sure. So... Okay, there, there we go. go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is a big <laughs> relief there, Gia. But there we go. Switch does breathe a sigh of relief. Take the win. That was that was a is that what super lethal means? Does super lethal mean win by juggle? Yeah, sure. We'll take that. <laughs> but Switch is certainly going to be quite happy.